Hello, hello, and welcome to my 2023 tier ranking video. Oh my goodness gracious. Honestly, guys, it is 3 p.m., but I made a single shot latte to be good, so. Anyways, y'all, my first video ever on this channel was a tier ranking video of all the books I read in 2022. It was really fun to film. It was kind of the video I dreamed of filming and all the years that I've watched YouTube. And it was really nerve wracking putting it out for exactly zero people. <laughs> And now you guys, we have a little community and I appreciate every single one of you that watches and comes back and comments and sends me DMs. I love you all so much. Not to get sappy at the beginning of this video, but it's just so fun for me to film this again a year later and have new books to talk about and just continuing to do something that I've really enjoyed in this past year. Okay, now that we got that intro out of the way, um, it's time to talk books. I feel like we're always doing disclaimers because we don't want to offend people at the beginning of these videos. And I will do so again, just because, you know, like I want to keep our community happy, healthy, feeling good vibes. I, I love to talk, I love to talk crap about these books and it's fun and it's silly and it's goofy, but it's so okay. Like if you loved a book I didn't love or that I don't have great things to say about because like that is why the book community is built, right? So we can see other people's opinions, we can get recommendations, we can compare notes. That is like the most fun part of being part of the book community. If we all felt the same, it wouldn't be as exciting. So take what I say with a grain of salt. It is just one woman's opinion and I like to have a silly goofy time. So without further ado, let's look at our categories. Before we look at the categories, I kept them mostly the same from last year's video. I will of course link last year's video if you're curious about what I read in 2022. If this is your first video here on the channel, thanks for being here. I'm so excited to share these with you. This is a great first video to watch because you're gonna see all my opinions on the books I read in this last year and we can kind of talk about, you know, our book preferences together in the comments. So without further ado, let's actually seriously <laughs> and fully look at these categories. I do have my computer right here in front of us, so I will be looking down here and there so I can continue, you know, sorting these books. So the lineup, the tiers that we are looking at today are at the top, absolutely feral for it. These are books that are six stars. They are books that are gonna stay with me. I haven't stopped thinking about, haven't stopped talking about, um, I will continue to do both. I am feral for it. Next, my starting lineup. Great place to be. This is a solid five star, high four stars kind of make this category, kind of make this category. This is where we put books that they're playing the game. They are on the court the whole game, susceptible to its charms. This is kind of an interesting category because this is gonna be like high three stars, four stars maybe, like lower on the four star scale. They were great, I enjoyed them. Clearly I'm susceptible to its charms. However, it wasn't perfect, right? We have complaints, there were things that were not five star material. Okay, it happened we move. This is gonna be lower three stars, upper two stars probably. It happened, it was fine. I don't have a lot of great things to say about it, but it also not a ton of terrible things. It just middle of the road mediocre. These are three stars, really. Immediately, no. We kept from last year. Immediately, no. Our books that <laughs> I think is straightforward, I do not like. Um, as soon as they came in the vicinity, I was like, this isn't the move. This is not something I would ever recommend. It happened we move our books I probably don't recommend either. If it's in the top three categories, I would recommend reading them very susceptible to its charms, like I do have some caveats, right? But for the most part, those three categories are recommendations. Immediately no is like not worth my time on this earth. And if we're talking books that are even more so not worth my time, jail time. Jail time is a little more specific than immediately no. Jail time are books that 
like my life would be better if these books never entered it. I have serious complaints about the book. I like actually hate them instead of just dislike. Last year I did have a section that was question marks because I was like, do I remember reading these or not? Some books ended up there. This year I'm taking it upon myself to have remembered everything I read this year. I'm not gonna let myself cop out and throw things in a question mark zone. So without further ado, we are gonna start tier ranking these books. I hope you got a treat. I hope you got a snack and a little bevy because this is gonna be a wild ride. It might take us a little bit of time. This year I read 77 books, so we have quite a few to go through. And I did sort the books based on the order I read them in, so because I feel like that will be the most entertaining for you and myself to go through. Um, but if I come across a series, I might look for the other ones in this series and kind of do them all at the same time because they're all interconnected. But besides that, we're gonna keep it to the correct timeline. So I've babbled, I've divulged, I've introduced this video. Let's get down into it. All right, I hope you put on your seatbelt, you're buckled up and ready to go because uh, we're getting right into it. The first book I read in 2023 was The Mistake by L. Kennedy. And was it a mistake? <laughs> I'm gonna throw it in, it happened, we move. Um, I don't think it was a mistake. I think they are kind of like reality TV, trashy TV that you watch and you kind of enjoy, can't stop, but like, it would probably be for the best that we stopped. So, you know, it's mid. Don't hate it, don't love it, but you know, it's entertaining in the moment. Next is Nine Liars by Maureen Johnson. I'm gonna put it in, I'm torn between susceptible to his charm and my starting lineup because this is, I think, a fifth installment to this um, mystery series. I really liked it. I know that there were varying opinions about this one, I will say. Some people really didn't like it. Um, I liked it. It took place like overseas. They go on this trip. I enjoyed that. For now, it's gonna be in my starting lineup. Things might change, but that feels that feels right at this moment. Next is Finley Donovan, Knox I'm Dead. This is the second installment in the Finley Donovan series. I'm not totally sure if that's correct. I enjoyed it. It wasn't knock your socks off good, but it was enjoyable. It was funny, susceptible to his charms for sure. Mr. Wrong Number, immediately no. Immediately no. I love Lynn Painter, but her adult romance, it don't hit and that is a fact. Um, so we'll just leave that one there. I, I know I need to like keep things moving because we do have a lot of books to discuss. Um, Suburban Hell, I'm going to put it in It Happened We Move. It wasn't great. I don't think it was terrible. I just, I don't know that it was for me. Yeah, we'll see if it stays there. I just don't think it was, was super fleshed out and amazing. Okay. Love in other words, definitely susceptible to its charms. I don't know if it's my starting lineup. I know people love it and I totally liked it, but I don't know that I loved it. You know what, while we're here, Suburban Hell, we'll put it in immediately now. If I hadn't read it, I would have been fine with that. Okay, The Valentine Inn, It Happened We Move. I do like these books. I like Jennifer Peel's writing. I don't think they're anything standout spectacular, but they're easy to read and I end up usually enjoying them even if they're not my favorite tropes. Next we have Magnolia Parks. I really enjoyed this one this year. It was honestly like catnip for me. I am gonna put it in susceptible to its charms because I don't think it blew me away like it did others. And I kind of knew the twist. I'm excited to keep reading in this universe. I just don't know if, you know, I'm not putting it out there on my starting lineup. That's just not where it belongs. Okay, the do-over though. <laughs> Borderline feral for it. Borderline feral. I'm gonna put it in my starting lineup. Uh, Lynn Painter, her YA exceeds all else. It's amazing. I love this Groundhog's Day, Valentine's Day situation. It did it for me. Amazing, beautiful, and stunning. Okay, 
Next we have The Lightning Thief. This is obviously like a young adult book. I'm going to put in Susceptible to Its Charms. I still enjoyed the reread. Um, but of course, I feel like some of my feelings and enjoyment of it were nostalgic and not necessarily like something I would currently rate a five star. The final gambit was good. It was good. Susceptible to its charms. It was good. It was enjoyable. It wrapped up the story quite well, I felt like, even though I've heard she's doing another book. So don't really know what's happening there, but definitely enjoyed. Little Prince is jail time. That is so mean of me. I didn't like this. I didn't like this. People act like it's the most artsy, amazing thing ever. I'm just going to move on. It kind of reminds me of The Alchemist. Anyways, let's move on. <laughs> okay. Under the Whispering Door. I did like this one. Oh, I did like this. I'm going to put it in Susceptible to Its Charms. I enjoyed it. Um, I don't know if it's starting line of material but it was quite enjoyable i feel like a lot of things are going to land in the susceptible to its charms we'll see we'll see we just got to go with our gut um i'm gonna put icebreaker and it happened we moved might be controversial but i wasn't obsessed with it it had some good moments it had some mad moments i think the epilogue like was this one the epilogue that made me be like okay ew I think I started boycotting epilogues after reading this book. So it happened, we move. The Bodyguard. This one was good. This one was good. It was really fun. Enjoyed it very much. Honestly, I got to do what I originally felt. <laughs> the do-over, I'm feral for it. Um, This feels better. And I honestly think The Bodyguard might even be in my starting lineup as well. This feels more genuine to me. Okay, <laughs> sometimes you gotta play with it as you go. I hope you guys are okay with that. It's like, I didn't practice this before I started filming, you know? So, we gotta take it as it comes, okay? Next is the Love Wager. Ugh, I think this one was better than Mr. Wrong Number. It is also in Painter, and I'm pretty sure they're companion novels. I, I'm gonna put in it happened we move it's not necessarily an immediate no but it just it doesn't live up to her YA for me I don't know why that is um beyond the one I'm gonna put in it happened we move I shouldn't have included it because normally like a memoir autobiography situation I'm I'm not gonna rate um but if I had to I guess this is kind of where it would fall just like it happened okay Finley Donovan jumps the gun. I was feral for this. It was so good. It was so funny. Laugh out loud. Amazing. Stunning. Brave. <laughs> it was, it was great. I think it was a perfect installment to the story. Um, I gobbled it up. Honestly, this is a good reading point because I am going to go ahead and put happy place in feral for it. So good. I honestly am ready to reread it. I loved it. I loved the found family, the friendships. This book is for people in their mid-20s, I swear. I love Harriet and Wynn. I think about them all the time. They're real. And also, obviously, normal people never shut up about that bad boy. It's amazing. Like, <laughs> normal people is everything to me. So that one is totally a six star as well. But now we are hitting quite the opposite uh, kind of book, which is Birthday Girl Witch deserves jail time. I'm sorry. If you've read this book, you know this deserves jail time. The way the whole only kink in this book is that there's an age gap and she's like 18 or 19 and he is ugh, so old. I'm not trying to be mean. You can have an age gap, but it was like, that was the whole plot. It's like, oh, there he's old and she's young and we're going to make sure she knows she's like a little baby. But it's like she is like if you don't like that she's a child it's probably because you shouldn't be with the child jail time <laughs> we'll move on daisy darker honestly i'm gonna put in jail time too um later on i did read and then there were none and realized this is kind of a and then there were none retelling um but i hadn't read it beforehand i didn't like the background stories for them i didn't like much of anything about this story but i finished it and like the things that people do in this book jail Dial A for aunties. 
I would say it happened we move. It was totally fine. I thought it was gonna be more mysterious. It wasn't, and so it goes. Um, but I definitely would pick up something else by this author, so. No harm done. All right, next we have Five Survive, which, is it my starting lineup or am I feral for it? I think I'm gonna put it in my starting lineup. I really like this, it was strong. I don't think she could have done it. I just see, I just don't think she could have done it any better. Like I really enjoyed it. I'm gonna put it in barrel in for it. I really, really enjoyed it. It was amazing. Yes. <laughs> we, yes, we were standing by that. Um, flawless, it happened, we move. I don't wanna talk too much about this. I know people loved it and I do not wanna make any enemies out of anybody. Like I, if you love this, I'm very happy for you. I didn't hate it. It just wasn't like earth shattering for me like it was for other people. And um, you know, I just don't have the cowboy thing at this point. Maybe I'll read something someday and it will inspire that. But when you grow up around cowboys, it just loses its lust. But on the other hand, we have The Switch by Beth O'Leary. And I really thoroughly enjoyed this one. Honestly, is it my start? I might put it in my starting lineup. Like I really liked the story. Uh, maybe it's susceptible to its terms. But I, I enjoyed it an awful lot. It was great. The housemaid, I'm gonna put in it happened, we move. I kind of called a lot that was going on. It was totally fine. But it wasn't anything groundbreaking. Okay. Never Vacation With Your Ex. Um, this one was written by the that author duo that are husband and wife. I can't think of their names right now, but this one let me down. It's a YA book by them. I'm considering putting it in jail because I expected a lot more from it and I was really let down. And I didn't really like, uh, I didn't like how they wrote it. Like, I don't know, I didn't find it very empowering or fun or goofy or silly in an enjoyable way. So, jail. Jail for them. Um, Witches of Brooklyn. These ones I didn't rate. I'm just gonna, well, I don't wanna mess with my thing. I'm gonna leave them here for now. I might put them in at the end. They were very, they were graphic novels, but they were very much for middle grade children. And like, I think if I was that age, I would love it. But at my age, I didn't. And I don't wanna give it a poor rating because it wasn't for me. Anyways. Let's move on because In the Lives of Puppets deserves jail only because I love TJ Klune and I've loved everything he's written and then he wrote this and it was just so below the mark for me. There was not a ton of redeeming things that happened and it's, it's going to jail purely because he's an amazing author and yet he served this. And that's and I get to have that opinion, okay? I'll totally read what he writes next, but... It was disappointing. Okay. I'm gonna put Indigo Ridge actually in Susceptible to its Charms. That's a little higher ranking than I think I gave the book, like rating wise, but I really like the premise. This like new woman is a sheriff in town. This man don't wanna help her. I liked it, okay? I was susceptible to the charm there. Soulmate Equation was, um, I think I like, I feel like I really put this in the middle of the road. But I think, I think it might be an immediately no. It just like wasn't worth my time. I didn't love the story. Uh, oh, Juniper Hill's here. Actually, quickly, Juniper Hill, I did not like. I did not like it quite at all. And I'm just gonna put in immediately no. And then I stopped reading the series because of that book. So we know how I feel, we know how I feel. But every summer after is in my starting lineup, baby. Some people feel controversially about this one as well, um, which is great. We all get to feel how we want. But this one is absolutely on my starting lineup. They are scoring every single time. Okay, <laughs> I need to take, take the sports references down quite a notch here. Next, we have The Extraordinary Adventures of Arsène Lupin. <laughs> Sorry about my French. I mean, this was fine. I was kind of bored, but it was kind of cool to see where some like mystery tropes came from. It's like the source material. Um, the True Love Experiment, 
the true love experiment i did like parts of this and i'm gonna be susceptible to its charm it had some really good bits in there i enjoyed it way better than its predecessor good stuff okay odd summer people that's this one i'm gonna put it immediately now all these people had problems honestly they should be in jail um it was not worth my time the inmate i'm gonna put susceptible to his charms like i actually ate up this book it's frida mcfadden good i liked the twistiness i enjoyed this one like it did it for me i am gonna put the summer i turned pretty i think i'll just put it in immediately no because like it is young for me and it's not summer without you i'm gonna just put him in immediately no not jail because you know, I just felt a little old for it, and I just wasn't really invested in what was going on there. When I used to read Jenny Han as a preteen, loved her. So if I had read it then, probably would have loved it. Chocolate Chip Cookie Murder, we can take to jail because it was a cozy mystery, but like at what expense? Like, was it cozy? Was it enjoyable? Was there even a mystery? It's hard to say. I'll just put it in jail. However, you're not supposed to die tonight. I'm gonna put in feral for it. I know people didn't like this. I know people have opinions. Well, I do too. This one slayed them boots. It was so good. I need to calm down, but I loved it. For real, for real, for real. We are cruising, you guys. We are doing totally good. So next is Book Lovers by Emily Henry. This one, I'm just gonna say it happened we move. Honestly, not my favorite Emily Henry. Kind of let me down felt stale for me. It just wasn't my story and that's fine because I love that other people love that one. However, I did reread The Unhoneymooners and uh, it's still so good. Honestly, it's still so good. Um, I liked it. It's classic enemies to lovers vibes. What can you do? Um, Sharks in the Time of Saviors was super interesting, but as far as enjoyment of a book goes, it wasn't amazing for me. Um, but it was really interesting. So it happened, we move. Oh, but I, see, like I would recommend it to other people. Like it's totally a book I would recommend. We'll put it in susceptible to its charms. Makes me seem smart to have it up there. You know what I mean? Okay. These hollow vows, you guys. <laughs> this is controversial because <laughs> the plot holes, the things that don't make sense in this book, the pretty much everything. Like I think I probably gave it a four just because I couldn't give it a five because of things that didn't add up. But enjoyment level, up there. Like I, I love this book. It got me out of a huge reading rut. And I, I don't know, their romance got me, okay? Sue me, I'm feral for it. It's the truth. I, I have to tell you it. These twisted, bonds however it upset me i'm gonna put it still insusceptible to its charms though because they have this scene where basically they have to do like these ceremonies for like a solstice type situation that a it got an extra star purely for that so susceptible to its charms no doubt oh my gosh this is when we have to start scrolling it gets really serious well there won't they i'm susceptible to its charm I really liked parts of it. The end really didn't come through for me, so that was difficult, but it had things that were good about it. This one was by Ava Wilder. Next, The Honeymoon Crashers. Jail time because I was really excited about this. It wasn't good. It, it was only, like it was a purely audiobook re release. So they had all like the background sounds and it was supposed to be like a whole production. The quality on that thing, oh, terrible. Zero out of 10. Like. If you were going to make an audiobook only release, like make it good. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that was my ugly side that came out, but I was just so disappointed. Never lie. I think that was probably it happened we move. It was fine. Not my favorite. Dragged on. On a quiet street was also fine. It happened we move on. I, the beginning was not good. The middle kind of served, so we can put it in it happen we move next another one that just feels like it happen we move is little white lies like i might pick up the other one if i'm bored at some point 
So it wasn't terrible, but like, yeah, it was nothing groundbreaking for me. But let's talk about groundbreaking for a second. Hold on. Divine Rivals. Not, not just susceptible. No, 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 no. This one I'm feral for. It's so good, you guys. It's the book I won't shut up about at this moment. It is. And so be it. So be it. Okay. So no, I'm second guessing some choices, so I might have to do a quick review here soon. But nonetheless, we press on. I am going to put, and then there were none in, well, I'll probably put it in my starting lineup, honestly, uh, susceptible to its charms. It was good. Um, there were a lot of reasons factored into it getting a high rating from me because of like what came after this and what I think Agatha Christie brought to the, you know, mystery thriller table. But as a book without those preconceived notions, I would just be susceptible to its charms. But a book that really did it for me right here, The Jassad Air, I'm going to put Feral for it because I haven't stopped thinking about it and I can't and I won't. There you go. There's my truth. Um, Burn for Jack's going to jail. I don't judge people for enjoying this. I had never read a monster romance type situation and I was shocked beyond belief. And yeah, we can just let that be what that is. Hollow was so great. I'm going to put it up in the starting lineup. Oh, if it'll let me. So good. So good. Amazing. Stunning. The artwork was great. Totally good to read during the fall time if you're feeling spooky and Halloween-y. Stocks Among Us was a really good book. Um, I'm gonna put it in Susceptible to Its Charms. It was really interesting. She handled the subject matter really well. More but the Yours is in my starting lineup, baby. You already know the steam, the characters. It was so unique and I just feel like sometimes the romance genre can get stale. This one spiced it up for me. If you need something to switch it up a little bit, this one is for you. Chan to meet you is going to jail because it felt millennial, it felt forced. It, I felt sad that I had to be a part of it. <laughs> the amount of books I've sent to jail, I should not have put that category on here. <laughs> the jail category, look at it, look at it. It's filling up. Okay, chocolate chip cookie murder maybe doesn't need to go to jail. It was just a no. <laughs> Okay, there we go. We're even. Okay. Um, a study in drowning, susceptible to his charms for sure. It was really interesting. Um, I just felt like it didn't do anything that was above and beyond that. I feel like that's fair. Let's actually do the whole once upon a broken heart situation here. Let's, let's get these out of the way. Um, once upon a broken heart, I would say I was susceptible to its charms. I might even put it in the starting lineup. Like I really enjoyed the first one. It set the mood amazingly. As far as like amazing books go, this one can be all the way up here with the rest of my true loves. I might need to organize these things a little bit more, but the Ballad of Never After, Slayed Them Boots, was so excited for three and it just didn't serve. Where's three? Okay. I'll just throw that one in susceptible to its charms. I feel like that's true. Like. The first one got me really excited. The second one carried that. The third one, I felt like she was like, okay, we're, we're done with this series. Like, let's just, you know, wash our hands of it. No, honey, I was not done. I was not done with that series. I was not done with my man. Anyways, let's let that be. Spookly yours, it happened we move. Um, there were parts of this I liked, parts I did not. And yet, you know, I read it. The Library of Shadows was an immediately no for me. It just like didn't do anything that made me enjoy it. I have so many things in jail. I'm so sorry <laughs> to the jail that we are overrun. Anyways, okay. Mortal Longings, Chloe Gong is going to jail just because it wasted my time. And that one actually deserves to be in jail. And it was just like trying to be so many things that I could not handle it, did not enjoy it, don't want to be around it. Um, Shady. Hollow. I enjoyed this. Susceptible to his charms. I enjoyed it. Um, assistant to the villain. Jail time. You guys know why people misled me. This is not what I expected it to be. Still mad. Thornhedge. I'm gonna put it in It Happened We Move. It had a great beginning. I thought we were going places together. I thought it was gonna be amazing, stunning, and perfect, and it wasn't. So. 
American Gods, it's a no for me, but people do like this, so I'm not gonna put it in jail, even though I think it probably does belong in jail. <laughs> but I kind of think everything belongs in jail. But let's just put it in, it just immediately no, it just wasn't for me. Other people like it. You again, I did like. I like this. I might move it up to starting lineup. I really enjoyed that one. I know, again, perhaps a controversial opinion because I know people didn't love it, but it had a few moments in there that just really got me in the feels. Faking Christmas, susceptible to his charms, it was cute. And Dark Window, I'm gonna put also in susceptible to his charms. I, you know, that series I really enjoyed. I just don't know that it's like a five star in the way it is for other people. Five rings, it happened, we move. It wasn't great. Uh, it was not great. The worded man, it happened, we move. Let's take a gander what we've created and see if I need to move anything any which way. Um, I feel like I might need to move this just to my starting lineup because I feel like that's more genuine to how I feel about it. So Finley Donovan is just in the starting lineup, which is still amazing, it's still five star. It's just not, I'm not just not quite as feral for it. Right? Yeah. These are all books I just don't shut up about, so I feel really good about my top two. Actually, there were a lot more books I read this year and liked than I thought um, because my rating average was not particularly high, but you know, those are good things to see. Also, every time I watch someone do one of these, I like to screenshot their um, lineup at the end because I wanna see what people's favorites are, I wanna look into them. So if you want to, I will um, make sure I'm out of the way enough anyways, so that you can screenshot it if you're interested in picking up anything from my feral <laughs> category or starting lineup. Um, I feel pretty good about this. These Twisted Bonds like only had one scene that was good, but I can't move it lower. I just can't do that because of how I feel about it. I think that's true. I think everything here and up, I recommend here and down. There are reasons that I didn't like it, but that doesn't mean you won't. But anyways, you guys, <laughs> there, there it is in all its glory, my final lineup. Please pay special attention to the books there at the top. Um, but that, that is all you guys. That is all I have for you today. This was so fun. I love getting to look back on the books that I read this year. Again, this is just me in the moment reflecting, feeling differently about books maybe than when I read them. But just taking a look at how 2023 treated me, um, honestly, it brought some amazing books into my life and I'm very happy about that. I'm super excited for 2024. I have new goals, I have new books, I have a lot of fun things coming my way and hopefully your way as well if you wanna stick around. Um, if there are any videos you were dying to see from me, by the way, in this new year, let me know. I love to hear what you guys are watching and what you wanna see, but please leave me <laughs> the books that you are feral for in the comments below, okay? And honestly, we are allowed to be feral for books that don't deserve five stars. And that's my truth. And we are allowed to send books to jail purely because we wish they were just better. So that's my take on that. Anyways, I hope you guys have a good rest of your day. Happy New Year. I know it's late, um, but we can still say it's a happy new year. And I will absolutely, totally see you in the next one. But until then, I gotta love you and leave you. So until then, cheers. Mm -hmm.